Oh, hello there. So you wanted to on-field Farina, do you? Well, guess what? I've got the perfect little tech for you. But we have to leave this cake shop to go elsewhere to show you. Alrighty, so this tech with Farina that lets you on-field her more is not necessarily going to be like, oh my god, she becomes an amazing on-field DPS. That's not really the goal, but it is definitely tech that requires on-fielding her more, and therefore it can enable certain teams, and in particular I'm going to show one specific team in this video, that works better, much better than it would otherwise with this specific tech. So what I'm going to show here is basically first why it works and, you know, going over some numbers and like the difference of it and what it can potentially cause, uh, including how it like opens up the potential that, you know, in teams where you're trying to abuse this cat, this tech, you might actually want to do something like instead of using golden troop on Farina, you might want to use Marshall's a hunters on him, on him, on her. I don't know how I screwed that up. Alrighty. So the main thing you need to know about Farina with the, when it comes to this tech and what enables it, is you need to know some specifics about how Farina's skill works. So her summons, she has three different summons, right? The seahorse fires its hydro little bubble every 1.5 seconds. The octopus fires approximately every 3.3 seconds. And then the crab is the important one that's going to be the topic we're going to discuss here today, is normally ones that fires every 5.2 seconds or so. And of course, in conjunction with that, so the seahorse is the lowest multiplier one, the octopus is in between, and then the crab is the highest multiplier one. So the crab gets the most damage, right? But more important than the damage they do is the fact that the seahorse applies hydro every other time it hits, the octopus applies hydro every other time it hits, but the crab applies hydro, hydro every single time it hits. And that is a very important distinction. And the reason that's an important distinction is because of the fact that they all have their own ways they apply Hydro and their own fire rates. Farina's summons end up applying Hydro in a very inconsistent rate. Like, you can never... You, you can get used to the generalized pattern of how, like, her summons timings can line up. But then there's also issues where the summons can teleport around to different enemies that are around you. And that can cause delays in when they hit as well. So, it, it basically... Farina has RNG Hydro application, <laughs> and that means you you know you can't rely on Farina in the same way you can rely on Yulon to give you a Hydro application every single time you're doing normal attacks, right? So now we come to the the special sauce, the the macaroni sauce that makes Farina work on field, and that special sauce has to deal with the fact that Farina does this. She has a mode switchy thing. And of course, this is her switching between Numa and Ogier mode. And her Numa mode is just, you know, this heal, which it's it's not completely useless, but in general, you don't normally want to be on this mode, right? But there's some interesting behavior that happens with the summons when you're switched between these modes, particularly when you switch between them really quickly. So I'm just going to have her in her Ogier mode. We're going to cast her summons out. Uh, you can watch the behavior of, you know, so watch what they do right after we cast Farina's skill. And then I will switch between her healing mode and then back to this mode and watch what the summons do and see if you notice what happens. So cast the skill. They all fire. I'll let them all fire again. You can see now they're all delayed because they, they're different timings that take effect. And then we'll switch modes, switch back. And they all fire again nearly simultaneously. Basically, doing two switches resets their firing pattern. Right? So this means we can take Farina from being, you know, RNG Hydra application to you do two mode switches really quickly, and you know they're going to do these three hits right away again. And the crab, because it always applies Hydro, will always apply Hydro when you do that. And the crab normally takes, you know, five seconds to fire every time, right? So I'm going to cast Farina's skill, and we're going to count in 20 seconds how many hits each of her summons get, uh, just in like a normal situation when they're not teleporting at all. And then I'm going to do it again with mode switching, and we're going to count again. The most important one for you to pay attention to while you're watching this is the crab. So pay attention to how many hits the crab gets, especially. Because every time the crab hits, it's also the one that does the most damage as far as the individual hits. Every time the crab hits in 20 seconds. So that's two hits. And then three hits from the crab. And then before the 20 second cooldown is up, we should see one more hit from the crab right in the end. Yep, there you go. So... You get four hits out of the crab in like one 20 second rotation. Uh, and then I'll probably have hits on screen for what the other ones get too. All right, so now we're gonna do that again, but this time in 20 seconds, every time the crab hits, I'm gonna do a mode switch 
to force the the summons to all start again and do their firing again right so it's gonna potentially remove some some hits that like the seahorse could have gotten for example in exchange for more hits from the crab at a more consistent set rate is kind of the idea here cast them and wait for them to hit there we go do switch okay crab hit switch crab hit switch Crab hit, switch. Crab hit, switch. All right, there you go. So you can see, um, if you if you were counting the crab hits in particular, I was focusing on you know making sure I timed them properly. The crab, I believe, gets two extra hits in that time. Um, I'll hopefully have numbers on screen on uh, in particular how the seahorse and octopus compares, and I'll, and I'll put something on screen right now that shows you know what the functional like multiplier difference would be uh for Farina in this situation but that the the that honestly isn't that important because if you're doing four piece golden troop right if you're staying on field for more than two seconds with Farina you're losing four piece golden troops like extra 25 percent damage bonus and that means it actually might make sense to do Marcia say hunters on her in this situation which is kind of weird right normally you you definitely wouldn't want to do that um and it's not necessarily that you do even if you do this tech, you don't necessarily want to use hunters on her because many teams she's still going to you know spend some time off field because you know you have to use your other character's abilities. No, go figure, right? Even if you're leaving on Farina on field a little bit. Anyways, let's get into an actual team that that this tech can be used in. Deploy this team. So this team is is a weird one. Uh, it, the the core of Nahida, Bennett, and Kazuma is. <laughs> it's one that like with someone like Yalan I have used before to do like very big front loaded vapes on Yalan with Farina in this team it's not necessarily better per se but it plays in a very different way and it is one that uniquely lets you utilize this Farina switching tech to your advantage oh one thing I should go uh, and mention quick so Farina's charge attack is her highest multiplier attack in her normal attacks but her normal attacks are attack scaling so they're not super relevant as far as like the damage they will do, but Bennett is on the team in this specific team. Bennett buffs attack a bunch, so you could actually see not completely insignificant damage from her normal attacks to a point where it might be worth to level up her normal attack. What matters more for this tech of her being on field is that she's going to apply extra pyro because I have C6 Bennett. Uh, C6 Bennett is kind of required for this to work because Basically, the idea of this team is you're going to use Farina to trigger Burgeons. Um, so the idea is, of course, you get Hydro from Farina, and you're getting a more consistent amount of Hydro from Farina due to the charge attack switching tech. And you have Pyro applied to Farina's normal attacks. So some mix of, you know, Pyro will be on enemies for Farina to vape with her skill, or Farina will have Hydro on enemies and you're going to vape normal attacks while also triggering Burgeons at the same time. So, yeah. All right, we're going to fight Masanori here so you can see how Freena would trigger Burgeons uh, in conjunction with C6 Bennett. And uh, then I'll discuss various options for this team. Um, Kazuha is not required and in some ways not ideal for this team because, you know, Freena, of course, drains health and that can make the team a bit fragile. But Kazuha is Kazuha and he does Kazuha things, which makes the team damage be quite strong. So, you know. All right, so we'll start with Freya E into Q, and then we'll Nahida, get some Virgin going, and then we'll do this, we'll do Bennett. All right, and we'll wait for Virgins to, there we go, there's a Virgin, so if we charge attack, you can see, bam, we Virgin for 26,000, and we can switch again, another Virgin, right? So you can do this charge attack spam switching, and I don't know how an overload got triggered there. Uh, oh, probably Electro on his sword, I forgot. But anyways, you get the point. Right, you saw you saw what happened there. You do, you do a charge attack on Farina, and her charge attack, interestingly, right? It, most most sword users do damage in front of them. They all, they do a normal attack and then damage in front of them for the most part. But Farina specifically does a, a AOE right around her when you're doing this switch, uh, and that makes her very easy to just like position near Burgeons, do a charge attack switch, and she pops the Burgeon cores, right? Uh, the the Bloom cores, I should say. So long as you're within, you have the infusion from from Bennett's from Bennett's burst. Uh, notably, by the way, you do maintain the infusion a little bit outside of Bennett's burst, but only for a very short period, right? 
So you can see I went out of burst, still had it, I can go back in. I still had it. So you can go out of a circle a little bit to mitigate the circle impact issue, but it is definitely a problem that you're gonna have to deal with, especially the more that enemies move around in Abyss. Oh yeah, and there is one thing I didn't mention, as far as like the timing of doing Farina's charge attack switching goes, you definitely want to do it basically the speed you're seeing me do it at. If you do it quite fast, you can do two charge attack switches in less than two seconds, uh, from what I've timed it. But if you do, if you click again to do her charge attack too early, you it doesn't take your input basically. Um, so you can see when I'm doing it ideally here. If I click it too early, it just doesn't take it, right? Uh, the main visual indicator, I think, you if you want to try to practice this, I've just gotten a feel for it after using this, doing this for a couple days, but. If you're looking for a visual indicator, just try to do it like right after you see like the color come back in Farina's outfit, right? That's the easiest visual indicator that I've noticed, right? And then you get a feel for it pretty quickly and it's not that hard. Um, if you mess it up, that can cause like a delay in when you're going to get your Hydra application potentially and that's obviously not ideal, right? So it is something you might want to practice a little bit, but in my experience it's really not that hard. I think it's much easier than even doing like jump cancels on Hu Tao or whatever. All right, we're going to fight Masanori in his high health version just to show this team like properly when I'm using Kazuo and everything first. And then I'm going to go over the specifics of how this team works and like different options for animal units in particular uh, and discuss, you know, different options and things you can do potentially with this Farina tech. You certainly don't have to use this specific team uh, to, to utilize this tech for doing Farina on field. You know, you could do something much on a, on a much simpler level, like, I don't know use Chung Yun and do a cryo Farina or something, right? But it's just a problem if you're doing that, you, you're not getting much advantage out of her her like damage from her normal attacks because it's attack scaling, right? Like if you're specking into her attack scaling normal attacks, you're sacrificing a lot of damage from her skill. That's why this team is interesting because it focuses not on, you know, the, the, the multiplier based damage that Farina gets from her normal attacks, but instead what using her normal attacks can do for you in the team which is cause you to get extra hydro in a, in a more consistent manner while also being able to trigger burgeons like Bur farina is the one that's going to be triggering things in this team but you need to use this like specific tech with her to make it like feel good it's kind of like what the point of this team is like this team requires you using this weird tech with farina on field a little bit aka on fielding farina to make it work properly but you can absolutely try to probably find ways, and there might even be better ways than I know of to, to make this tech work. Okay, let's go against Midnight Mouse and I'll show it, and then I'll describe all the nonsense that's happening here. Like that. Bennett. Like you. Swirling Hydro is quite inconsistent in this team. Oops. Don't let Farina die. Um, one thing you're going to see in this video, by the way, it, oh, that was dumb. I started talking and I forgot what I was doing. Uh, you're going to see that this team be a squishy. <laughs> so if, if a squishy team is what you don't like, I mean, don't use Farina. That's what I can tell you. Ow. I started talking and now I've stopped paying attention to anything going on. There we go. He's dead. That was a little bit scuffed in the end there, but the beginning sequence worked pretty well. You, sa you saw how it functioned. So anyways, let me go over the, the, the builds a little bit on characters. So for Farina, as I described before, like n a normal-ish golden troop build or a or a Marsha Say Hunters build actually works quite well. I'm using golden troop because I have much better options to potentially give her extra energy recharge. Uh, obviously her ER is going to be important in this team because her burst is going to give a bunch of damage bonus to herself, but also give damage bonus to Nahida, and it, it's, it's definitely not irrelevant to use. Now, as far as weapon goes, that's more important on Freena in this team. Key of Kaja's suit is uniquely a really probably strong <laughs> weapon, to say the least, on this team, because it gives a bunch of, you know, damage stats. The HP is very good for Freena's own personal damage, but then it converts HP to giving a bunch of EM not only to her, but to other team members. And they all the team members in this team basically care about their EM. So Key of Kaja's suit is a very nice to have, but if you don't have Key of Kaja's suit, you can use Ziphos Moonlight, and if you don't have Zephyr's Moonlight, there is certainly an argument to be made for like the likes of Iron Sting, right? And Iron Sting's passive does actually help Freena's damage a little bit here. The nice thing about things like Zephyr's Moonlight or Keep Counter Suit is these weapons just like give 
so much of the stats that Farina wants. You know, Key of Kaja Suit gives a whole bunch of EM and HP, and Ziffel's Moonlight gives a bunch of EM and then also gives a bunch of ER based on EM, and it gives ER to the whole team, which is really, really nice. The downside is they're both freaking gacha, you know, banner weapon, weapon banner weapons, which which really sucks. If you need to meet ER needs, Fab is always an option. Uh, she is solo Hydra in this team, so her ER needs aren't insignificant. But in my experience, I've been able to get away with running 160 ER on her with, with without really any issues. Her ER needs are higher, not insignificant in this team. And then you also want a whole bunch of EM, and you ideally want HP and crit. So balancing Farina's build in particular is kind of goofy. Um, but for what it's worth, again, I have a mostly normal Farina build on, on her in this team. With the exception of I plan to switch to an EM timepiece for the purpose of getting a little bit more burgeon damage. So this is the specific build I plan to use in this video. So 70 crit rate, 160 crit damage on Golden Troop, which means while she's on field, her skills are gonna her summons are gonna hit for a little bit less damage. And 160 ER. Uh, Bennett is an interesting case uh, on the, in this team. So Bennett really, really wants Fav. That's for sure, just to help with energy for all the characters, but most notably Farina. And other than that, though, Instructors on paper is his best set for this team by far because you don't really care that much about like, any attack buff like Noblesse or whatever. So 120 EM is a significant damage upgrade for like the Burgeons that your, your Farina can get, right? But Farina does make the team really fragile. So honestly, I don't have the artifacts for it, but honestly, I would potentially recommend if you really wanted to use this team, a four-piece Maiden's build on Bennett because he can actually potentially overheal for you know any of your party members particularly the more squishy ones right and that can trigger Freena's passive and that can just help your teammates stay alive uh this team does have the freedom to be relatively quick swappy so bennett is enough healing to make sure you don't die but it requires again awareness and you're still going to be fragile but with that said i still think Farina or sorry nahida on prototype amber makes sense because healing a little bit of additional healing whenever you use nahida's burst is is quite nice as far as Kazuo goes, Kazuo is probably the most replaceable in this team, um, particularly if you want to use like Jean or more relevantly Sayu because Sayu has less field time uh, than, than the likes of Kazuo or Jean because they have their really long, you know, five star burst animations, yay. So more field time, less field time with your animal unit means more field time on Farina is basically what it comes down to. I'm going to use Kazuo because Kazuo, you know, gets a whole bunch of damage bonus and, you know, I do have C2 Kazuo, which is not insignificant, obviously, so... That's going to give me some potentially faster clears than you could get with, you know, a Sai or whatever. But honestly, this team feels like it performs less due to like things like having constellations on characters or whatever, and more due to how you play. Like uh, when I've been testing this team before, it has very heavy variance in like, oh, I can get a 40 second clear on the seahorse and abyss, or I can get, you know, a minute, sec a minute clear. And some of it's down to enemy behavior, some of it's down to me screwing up slightly or whatever, like being hit by the enemy or um, just doing something stupid. So, yeah, I don't know. It's a really weird team. I'll go show you in action and stop rambling. The worst thing about this team, by the way, is like, oh, what are you going to do on the second side when you're using Kazuha, Bennett, and Nahida, and Freena all together in one team? <laughs> like, this is basically the, the, the four strongest supportive you know enabling characters in the game and you're shoving them together on one team and trying to make them work <laughs> it's it's a strong team but it doesn't necessarily leave it, it leaves less options for your your other side of abyss open i don't know what this nubilet team is for the second side but we're gonna try it because it's i don't know it's nubilet it's jank it'll probably work fine because it's nubilet normal and charge attack bonus let's go that's actually kind of garbage we're gonna choose hp normally you do want to start with freena first in this team uh but the the seahorse here makes things a little bit goofy. I don't know how many attempts I'm going to show here against this stupid seahorse, but like I said, if if you clear this optimally, Farina can potentially out. You can see. All right, do a switch. Do a switch. Okay, I didn't do that well. Um, if I do this well, I can tell you, I can I can definitely get the horse down in that like time frame there and you can clear this very fast so i'm gonna i'm gonna probably attempt this a few times i'll show if i see anything interesting happening you know i'll, I'll include in the footage otherwise i'm gonna skip to like trying to do this slightly properly um the seahorse makes this just a little bit goofy in this particular team honestly this whole abyss cycle makes using this team a little bit goofy this, this team is just goofy okay Ah, 
that, do that. Uh, I got Squirrel Hydra, that's something. Hey, there we go, we knocked it down. Okay, okay, okay. Do that, do that, do the reverse. Kazuha. There we go. That was okay. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so that was a that was a forty one second clear, I believe, and um, I, that only took me two tries. To be clear, I literally practiced that team in that chamber for probably thirty minutes to an hour straight yesterday. Let's say let's say you know that my constellations were making a thirty percent difference in that team. Add thirty percent onto forty seconds. Thirty percent onto forty seconds is like fifty five seconds. <laughs> it's still a very fast clear against a, a not easy abyss chamber like there's not many teams that can clear the seahorse in 40 seconds okay i'll be honest that was a little bit of a jank nuvulet team but it's still you know it's still cleared with a, a minute to clear like, Ooh, crit thank you game i don't have my burst up in this side now which is not ideal but it's fine we'll, we'll see how things go in a little bit in more non-ideal faction i suppose Burst. And we got your burst, which is good. Alright, and okay, everything's already dead. That's just how this team goes. Sometimes things just die before you get to do anything fancy. Can you stop running? Yeah, okay. Th this chamber is annoying because, like, I mean, you you can you know why it's annoying. <laughs> can you stop? Like, I would love to go and hit those virgin cores there, but this boy's a butthole. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna retry this chamber until I can get like a a satisfying feeling clear. This abyss is honestly just terrible for showing off this team. <laughs> The enemies aren't taking enough to see the like damage potential you can get from this team, and then they also just constantly interrupt me from doing the freeing of things that I want to do. And he just died before I even did anything, okay. Alright, let's see if I can do something here. No, stop. Okay, use that to interrupt him. Okay, it, um, well, that was the fastest I did this. I, I still didn't get to do normal attack things with Farina, but you know what? A 42 second clear, I'm gonna I'm gonna call a 42 second clear good enough. This teleporting butthole. These stupid buttholes didn't teleport in the beginning. I think I would be able to clear this chamber way faster with this team, but here's what it is. Benis burst up. Let's do that. And oh, one of them already died somehow, so you know that's good. And blam. There we go. Okay, that was that was okay. That was a that was an okay showing there, of of that team functioning. The the clear was still a little bit slow because of the um, mirror maiden at the start teleporting around. But I don't know. I, I it's weird. This team is really weird. Alright, and that might be the most scuffed Nubulet team I've ever used, but you know, it's fine. 
Alright, so anyways, I I don't know if that was even <laughs> in the footage I showed there was that good of a showing of how you can on-field Farina. Like, on paper, you should be able to, free to use Farina on-field significantly in this team, but the, like, burst animations of, like, Nahida and Kazuma end up, like, taking a lot of time sometimes, and then you just get interrupted with Farina, and then you don't get to spend much field time, but things die anyways. <laughs> it's just like, oh, okay, I guess it's good. I don't know, the Wolves are going to be interesting because this team is fragile and the Wolves mean it becomes even more fragile. <laughs> but I, I want to see how they perform against the Wolves. I haven't actually tried this team against the Wolves. Okay, let's see how first chamber side two goes. Things died very fast there. Oh, I forgot to use Verena's first again. It's relatively important. Ben is almost dead. It's fine. Everyone's almost dead. It's just how things are going to go here. Where, 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 can you cease doing this? Die, please. There we go. Nice. Okay, let's see if I can get them to teleport to me. All right, good. We'll do this. Group them. A little bit of heal from Nahira. That was interesting seeing what the, the crab did there when I was targeting something that was teleporting. All right, do that again. Okay, this is a little bit scuffed on the on the wizards here. I could have done this a lot better, but yeah, I, I don't know. Y you saw it. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know if that was necessarily the best showing of how you can on field freedom more. Maybe <laughs> maybe it would be nice if I could turn my constellations off so I could you know kill things slightly less fast with with Kozula or something. But uh, eh. it's just a problem of the enemies sometimes die too fast and then like you know like like a lot of the corrosion dogs for example died like right as i basically switched to Frida to start doing normal attack things with her and um then it was like oh okay they died so now i have to reapply nahida again and then you're basically just starting over rotation so things die too fast and i don't get to do the things i want to do but i don't know it, the team's too strong bad problem to have not a bad problem to have i mean <laughs> it's a it's a good problem to have so, anyways, you might have better better ways to to utilize the tech that causes Freena to get more, you know, hydro applications consistent by using her on field. It certainly doesn't like oh, suddenly make her, you know, compete with Xing Cho for hydro application or anything. But I don't know. It, it's a way to control her hydro application, which is really important because normally you really can't control her hydro application. And I can tell you that team feels a lot worse if I just you know use Farina and let things happen automatically, even though it kind of seems like things do happen automatically, which they do, but I don't know. If you like this video, next week I actually plan to release a video on good old Charlotte. I have a an, a, an interesting build going for her, and it's probably going to be a, a substantially worse team than, than this one I had in this video, but I don't know. I wanted to share this interesting tech with Freedom. Let me know in the comments, like and subscribe to whatever if you if you don't hate me. And um I don't know, let me know if I'm just a filthy filthy whale, dolphin, etc. for my constellations or if or if you try this yourself and uh I don't know, let me know how it goes. See if you enjoy the team. See if you enjoy the tech. Blah blah blah. Blah 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 blah. Blah blah blah.